Is it happening? Is it working? Hey everybody, welcome. And uh, you know, guess what? It looks like we're back to downstairs. We're trying everything here today. We're having a little bit of uh, technical weirdness on our end, but thank you for finding us. Thank you for watching and welcome. Welcome to the Living Room Community Art Studios uh, Tuesday artist chats on Instagram. Every week we do these. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, every week we do this, 2 p.m. or 2.09 today, as it happens to be. And it just gives us a chance to check in, see how people are doing, uh, have a chat with some amazing local artists who are doing, and sometimes not so local artists, who are doing really cool things in our community. So thank you so much for being here. Now I'm just looking to see if you're here, come on and say hello. It would be great to hear from you. And Danny Crosby, who is our guest today, if you're out there and you are watching, please, please, please send a little hello and let us know what's going on with you. Let's see. I'm just gonna let Danny know we're here after the technical difficulties. There we go. Um, oh, hi guys, welcome. Uh, so yes, an interesting start to today, but you know, Times are what they are, and we make do with what we have. Hello, Danny. Thank you. And for everyone else who is joining us, thank you. We're starting a little bit late today, but that's okay, just because of technical difficulties. And uh, welcome back to my living room in my home. There you go. There you have it. This is me in a bookcase right behind me. Um, so you know what, it's 10 after two. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Danny so we can get this chat going. There's so much to catch up on. And Danny was one of the original artists that we spoke with at the very, very, very beginning uh, when everything shut down due to COVID-19. So it's about time to have a check-in and catch up on what things are like for them these days. And hello, welcome everybody, welcome. So let's see if I can invite Danny. Let's go live with Danny. <laughs> Let's see. <gasps> Danny! Hi! Hi! Finally! Yay! Oh. How's it going? You know, just uh, the theme to the last few weeks has been uh, connecting with um, I understand. My computer keeps telling me that. I have a message there. Oh, you are. You are cutting out, like right now. Oh, no. Just your voice. But keep talking. I'll pick up on it. Okay. That's good. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Um, now, there may be people watching today or tuning in who aren't familiar with who you are. So can you introduce yourself to the folks who are watching? Sure. My name is Danny Crosby. I'm a arts educator and illustrator uh, based out of Oshawa, Ontario. Perfect. <laughs> and I like we've been working together on a project for a long time now, but I'll get to that in a little um, To start with, I I would guess I was really interested in catching up to see what the last four months have been like for you as an artist, as a community member. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I'll try and keep that short. Uh, we've all been having our own unique experiences during this time. Um, I had some pretty uh, hilarious timing at the beginning of the lockdown. I did have to continue to do some work um, that um, put me in the vicinity of people um, in a distance pace. Uh, shortly afterward, um, I did become very ill for two and a half weeks. Um, but at the very same time, um, a whole bunch of people swooped in and hired me for various jobs from our very own community. So it was great incentive to just stay focused and stay positive was having that work. Um, I also have my son at home with me. So um, it was a test for both of us to see how we would navigate um, sharing my time between playtime and learning time and, and Zooming for work and uh, meeting deadlines. Um, it worked out. Um, I'm lucky he's at the age where I can explain the situation and negotiate according to his comfort level um, how I can best navigate all these different responsibilities. So it was a learning curve for both of us, honestly. Because um, my routine 
uh, prior to this looked very different, mm. you know, but um, yeah. Have there been any discoveries for you? Um, well, uh, definitely uh, kind of pushed me and my son to develop uh, new ways of sharing our time and spending our time, um, what really looked like parallel play for the two of us. So um, how to make sure that when I'm busy, he's set up with something to do at an activity station and sort of, you know, how can I involve him in the Zoom meetings without disrupting the Zoom meetings? So it kind of made both of us like test our patience and test our creativity and stay engaged even when I had to step away momentarily here and there. Um, so it just forced us both to build new routines and new strategies for getting through the day and getting through what needs to be done throughout the day. I've been thinking about it a lot, especially these last few weeks where announcements have been made about um, kids going back to school, teachers going back to school, and uh, as an arts educator, moving back into the system, are, how are you feeling about teaching art? Um, this is new territory for all of us. It's, I can't really call anybody up, you know, from our pool of faculty and say, okay, well, how did you do it? How did you do it at such and such a time? There hasn't been such and such a time. Um, so what I'm doing to prepare is I'm learning the best I can from, um, the individuals I know who do distanced teaching who do um, live streaming, for example. So I'm really pulling on the knowledge and expertise of my friends and fellow creatives to prepare me so that I can offer what I typically try to offer within the classroom setting the best I can from a distance setting. Um, I'm also seeking opinions um, from people who would be willing to give me uh, critical feedback to my plans. Um, I'm trying to poke as many holes in, in my plans and, and my, my strategies in advance to make them as strong as possible. But I mean, I think it's uh, fair to say I'm nervous. You know, I, I want to be able to give each of my students a valuable and uh, personalized experience, the same as I would if I were sharing the same space with them. Uh, so I think keeping uh, open lines of communication, welcoming consistent feedback, encouraging students to tell me what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with, what they need more of, less of, is going to really make or break um, my approach um, to the virtual classroom this fall. How much of that approach to teaching art has inspired influenced by how you work as an artist to begin with, do you think? Sorry, you're cutting out a bit. So how much um, is the way I teach art inspired by myself being an artist to begin with? Yeah. Um, well, uh, teaching is connection. And my favorite kind of art involves creating connection with others, whether it's directly or virtually or through writing or audio file. Um, so, Teaching is a social experience. So while I do spend a lot of time um, isolated when I'm in the studio creating, um, teaching is an opportunity to share. So I, I do a lot of learning and um, practicing and testing of creative boundaries on my own. And teaching is a way of keeping us all in touch with each other in our creative journey. So it does inform me directly in the classroom for sure. Yeah. I, wanna, I, I learn as much from them as they do from me, I hope. I've been in the classroom before. I've been lucky enough to be a guest. And I, I can attest to that. I think your students are receiving and sharing a really enriched experience. If that I hope. That. I hope so. And I'm, I'm hoping the circumstances coming this fall will be something we can take and channel into the work, um, that we can take these circumstances and allow them to uh, give us something to bond over, to share over, to connect over, and face the challenge in a unified uh, manner. Yeah. That's how I'm hoping. How do you think our 
maybe like all art, but community arts in particular will be influenced by that. By what's happening with the uh, distancing? Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry if I'm repeating your questions back to you, it's just because you're cutting it slightly. Um, oh boy, well, it's going to push us all out of our comfort zones unless we were there already um, with the uh, distance sharing of creativity and engaging creatively with others virtually. I think it can be done. Um, it absolutely can be done. I've been watching you and your team go about it brilliantly um, since the beginning of the lockdown. I've been taking uh, a lot of tips and guidance just from you, from observing you and from observing others. Um, I think it's going to be a matter of uh, making sure everybody's comfortable with the technology because artists naturally you know, know, know how to create, know how to express themselves, but giving them this different um, path that they need to take through the technology to get their art from their studio to an audience or to have their art informed by an audience. It's going to be a matter of mastering the technical end of things. Um, so my goal is to familiarize myself with that as much as possible so that um, my students can focus on engaging with the community for the creation of art, um, engaging with each other and hopefully I will be able to support them from the technical end. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to make sure they don't feel isolated or cut off because they can't reach a, ca a classroom or a traditional gallery because there are other ways of connecting. There are other ways of making sure your work gets out there and I'm going to be um, exploring every single one of those ways um, with them this fall. I think as an artist, you're already so familiar with community engagement in all its forms. I have no doubt it will be a big step. It's going to be a challenge, um, but I think what's going to make it a success um, is going to be, again, just keeping communication open with each student, you know, talking to them. What's your goal for this semester? Yeah. What do you want to see yourself get out of this and how can we get there together? It's going to be a lot of, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of learning and adapting as I go and I'm going to try and keep that something that we all try to do together and support each other, even though there's going to be moments of frustration and there's going to be moments of adjustment. So if we acknowledge that up front, I think we'll have a lot more success. Mm -hmm. And even on days like this, where I think it's like we're technically working as smoothly as we'd want them to work. Yeah. We find a way. Yeah. And there has to be, you know, I'm trying to prepare with like plan A, plan B, plan C. So what happens if I'm supposed to be live streaming a classroom um, and I can't for some reason, I need to have something pre-recorded to compensate for that. I'm going to need to have um, handouts ready to download. I'm going to need to engage by email or however. Um, there's going to be a, a need for a lot more uh, tiered planning strategies than there is under normal circumstances. Wow, so much work. <laughs> uh, but this, since we don't know um, when things will or will not go back to normal, the work needs to be done. Um, what I'm hoping for is that there will be a lot of support uh, for us as faculty um, to help us along in this process, this evolution of our way of teaching and engaging. Mm -hmm. And it could become something that helps more people connect. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a shared um, circumstance. We're all sharing it. So it really does, it can serve as a potential to bring us together and bring us closer and, you know, give us a reason to help each other along the way rather than just um, try and avoid it in frustration. We can't avoid it, you know. <laughs> So we need to work through it together. There's no going around it. And discover new ways of connecting whenever we can, however we can. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, approach uh, this fall with all of my ideas, but I, I will be open to new and improved ideas as I go along. So it won't be a a static process. Uh, we need to remain fluid and open to feedback, to criticism, and to suggestions along the way if we're going to make this work. Yeah. Um, now, can I ask you, speaking of communication, 
can I ask you about the stranger listening trial? Sure. Um, it's really just um, a name that I'm working under for specifically for projects where um, the project involves listening to and interpreting visually stories from um, individuals, whether anonymously or identified. Um, so I started doing work of this nature um, for the uh, body language show at the Rob McLaughlin Gallery, which took place in the fall of 2019. That project involved um, collecting anonymous stories about identity, emotions, and lived experiences from individuals around Durham region. And I didn't um, operate under that title for that show. It was really something very new that I always wanted to try. I didn't really know if it would work for me, for everyone involved, but I've since gathered feedback from participants who've identified themselves and feedback from the audience, and I feel very good about it, and I want to do more of it. Um, so that's where that name came from. It's a description of the role I want to take on in that kind of work, which is to be a stranger listening. Um, and I want to see this expand, not just uh, to be isolated to my own interpretation, but I would like to eventually branch out into workshops where I would impart my knowledge um, and skill sets to people who want to learn how to visualize their own story with their own skill set. Um, so that's sort of the nature of stranger listening. Thanks for asking. No, I, I love, uh, I love that project title. I also like the idea of changing the way. So sorry, repeat that last bit. Of I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Um, I love. Like stranger listening, yes. Stranger listening, like how we can change oh. the people, and yes, so that we can receive things or uh, see or hear people in ways we wouldn't otherwise see them if we were just taking their presence in our for granted. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it it absolutely makes sense, and it's also. It's also to point out that you don't have to be someone's friend or someone's colleague or someone's family member to listen, that we can be a stranger and still show support and still lend to uh, other person's journeys of discovering identity and representation. Um, so in what seems like a detached role, you can still be very supportive and, um, and helpful and useful along the way. Yeah. And hello to folks who are joining us today. Hello. Um, perhaps this is a good time to talk about our project, the Living Room and Listening and Reciprocity Media. Uh, we've recently, for those of you who don't, we've recently launched a project called Lis um, Listening to. It's been a long time in the works, and we've had to make some interesting changes to accommodate COVID 19 and people not being together. Uh, but can we, can I talk to you about the, the, please do, please absolutely do. And thank you, by the way, for inviting me to take part in that project. We've been talking about it for quite a while and mm -hmm. yeah, it's had to adapt to the circumstances. Initially we were going to sit or cross from individual participants in, in the living room space. A lot has changed, but please go on. Yeah. It uh, emerged out of a response to the health neighborhood's response, uh, which for those of you who may not know, uh, identified a number of in Durham region that were priority neighborhoods. So in this case, that means additional supports to have truly have out of seven neighborhoods in Durham region, five of them happen to be an author. So we just started talking about these communities in the studio and the project was sparked formal conversations about what it was like to live in these neighborhoods. Um, <laughs> what it was like to live with the stigma of in these neighborhoods. Because oftentimes if you live in a property, you know, it hasn't become that way overnight. There's been a lot of things to it. And part of it is how people perceive neighborhood maybe even treat it uh, as a result of their perceptions. But no, 
these neighborhoods or what it's like to live and work. Um, so when it came to, we thought about creating like portraits of some kind, something to represent the neighborhood fresh, new, based on the lived experience of people who know those neighborhoods best. That live. And you were the first person we thought of taking on a project of this nature, partially because of the body, the, like the, the, uh, the portrait project that you've already done uh, with the RMG. You have a remarkable way of taking information and transforming something visually spectacular. Um, so that's not exactly a question, but you're the first person we thought to exist in this project. And also, or just, um, as far as community engagement, you've always been on the growing edge before it was popular to do, before we had to name like for social practice arts or anything like that. You've always... Well, I don't, I don't know. I sort of just came about it through a need, a personal need I had myself to connect hmm. in a particular way. You know, you can say it was a bit selfish. Um, you know, I did a lot of work uh, prior to participating in community engaged projects that were fairly isolating. And it was just me, myself and reactions to the world around me, but not a direct engagement being part of the inspiration or the creation process. So, I mean, it's actually really, really great to go from reaching out to now being invited in. Um, mm -hmm. This is the first project of this kind that I've been invi invited into um, mm -hmm. that I haven't um, come up with and had to reach outward. So it's, it's really fantastic, I'm hoping that for both of us, this, this can turn into an ongoing approach that we take in our practices. I would love that. I think that this could be the beginning to something really, the first part of a large perhaps. Yeah. And there's some people like in the comments section below, I'm seeing a lot of love. Oh, I see. I wasn't reading until you said that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> are phenomenal. They absolutely. Um, and maybe this is an opportunity too for folks who are watching or listening. If you have questions about uh, the listening to our neighbor, feel free to ask them. We're both here. We can both answer your questions. Uh, what's, what is, Danny, something you're hoping from the, the listening to our neighbors? Sorry, I want to repeat it back to you. What is something I'm hoping will come out of the listening to our neighbors project? Yeah. Okay, um, so a sense of representation and uh, exploration of identity for our participants. Um, mm -hmm. I hope they feel respected. I hope they they feel their stories and experiences and thoughts are being honored. Um, I'm hoping further discussion will come out of this project. The project, in and of itself, in an, in and of its process, is valuable even before the art takes place. I would say the most valuable part is the communication that's going to take place through a collection of audio or in-person um, content. Um, it's what we do with it, I think, is going to be uh, the most important. So who, who has access to it? Who learns from it? Who does it make feel less alone? Who does it make feel more represented? Um, who does it encourage to pursue conversation and change and who does it bring a sense of dignity to and who sees themselves, mm -hmm. um, not just inside those neighborhoods, but outside of neighborhoods that are similar. Yeah. Um, I, I live in one of those neighborhoods myself and I never really thought anything like this would be happening. It's really exciting. Um, and to be involved is all the more exciting. Um, so does that answer that question? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I did for the same things. I'm, I'm also really curious to learn about uh, hidden gems. Does that make sense? Perhaps the Absolutely. or uh, really like exciting moments or stories or experiences that haven't been great honor on a larger platform. Um, I'm excited to see if there's anything in the communities that we can support. Yes. You know, like, if there are really cool things or groups of people or individuals want things, but 
had an opportunity or the support to help do them. I would love to learn how we maybe provide a plan. Or that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I wish if, if, it, we, if it wasn't a pandemic, it would be so great to be out there working with people, co-creating. I know, I, I was sort of visualizing us, you know, popping up in each neighborhood physically, um, sitting down in a convenient place for everyone to find us and, and doing it that way. But, you know, if we can do it this way, we can do it under any circumstances. So this is a really good, you know, acid test for our process. If we can make this work, if we can reach people effectively. And we are doing a little bit of physical popping up because the truth is not everyone has access to um, a computer or the internet. Um, we're going to do our best. It's not going to be perfect, but I think it, it, if we do it right and we listen closely to the needs of our participants, it could really turn into something very uplifting, very beneficial. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, to have at least a pop-up, one in-person pop-up in every neighborhood. Yes, that would be great. If you're out there and you don't have access to internet or, uh, you know, well, obviously, if you're watching this, you have some access, but if like us to come to your neighborhood, your building, send us a message, drop, drop a line, and we'll set something up for you. Yep, I'll do, be there. Do things as safely as possible, masks. Uh, washed up all of those sitting two meters apart, whatever it takes to gather your stories. Uh, but otherwise, and just check it out. See what we're all an audio survey. So we're really also, I think we're also hoping speaking to yourself. Hello, welcome folks. We're hoping that people will feel free to, rant, to share their stories and just talk. Press record and just let us know whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, uh, taking your time, getting really specific. There's no wrong. Yeah. Speaking, speaking is the artist who will be interpreting stories. Big emphasis on there's no wrong way of doing this. I had a few people who wanted to participate in my prior project. And even though it was anonymous, they would contact me directly and say, I'm not sure I did it right. Or I'm not sure you can really use this. Or would this really make good art? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think my story would be would be useful in that. And I would, I would you know, tell them what I'm telling you right now, which is that there is nothing wasted. There is nothing boring about anyone's individual life and experiences and identity. So don't worry about doing it wrong because you absolutely can't. Anything you give us is of value. Why do you think some people assume that their story wouldn't be welcome? I don't, I don't even know if it was whether it'd be welcome or not, but I think they were confusing valuable with entertaining. You know, they, they, they were saying words like, oh, I don't know if it's exciting or, or this or that, but it's not about exciting, it's about interesting and valuable which is every single person and their story. Um, there isn't a single person that you could meet and interact with and not learn from. It's impossible. So uh, to anyone out there that is, is, is concerned about that or self-conscious about that, please don't be. Um, I had entries from young teenagers all the way up to, um, I think the oldest participant was 98 years old and um, it's either 98 or 89, I tend to mix things up. But either way, quite the range. Um, and nowhere in there was anything boring or unvaluable. Every single story I grew with every single story, I was challenged with every single story. Um, with every single story, I felt less alone in my community. So believe me, there is a Absolutely nothing will be skipped over or brushed off. It's it's there to absorb. So bring it to us, whatever you have. Yeah. I think, I wonder sometimes if people along with that the sense of uh, insignificance somehow. That, you know, my, for me, I'm really excited to hear the, all the little things. There is nothing yeah. significant in any part. Yeah. That's how I feel too. Yeah. And 
just a, a, a piece about, because we can't be there, for, we will also be creating a soundscape to go along with these images. So I'm really personally excited about this part. Um, it's a new creative process for myself to dive into, to find something that complements the images you're creating. I'm super excited. I'm also enjoying the fact that we'll be able to use voices from the name, voices of the actual people who live. Yeah, that's going to be incredible. Yeah. You're going to feel so close to everyone um, after you absorb the work. Mm -hmm. I feel like it... it I feel like it's unavoidable that you would feel closer with your community after experiencing their story. What do you hope this will be exhibited as well, eventually? Um, what are you hoping that people who don't learn? Sorry, once again, I will repeat back to you. So you're cutting out. Um, what do I hope people will learn from the project? Uh, yes, about people who live in other communities. Ah, from yeah. outside. Um, about how much we, we have in common, for example. Um, there's a connection between all of us, no matter how um, divisive circumstances may seem. Um, I'm hoping it will also create awareness and compassion and perhaps act as an, a call for action, whether that action is to become more directly involved in your community, more supportive and com compassionate in the way you communicate with people on an everyday basis. Um, I'm hoping it will also um, encourage people to open up and engage with one another in whatever method is most comfortable. Um, you know, this is not comfortable for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> it has its benefits and it has its purpose. So I'm hoping it will encourage people to step outside of their comfort zones and engage with people because every every single interaction, and I would I would venture to say, especially the ones that push me outside of my comfort zones, uh, help me grow and become more directly connected to where I live. It's not just somewhere I sleep or work or have to be, but it, the more I get to know the people that make up my community, the more it becomes somewhere I feel I belong and somewhere I feel I can affect in some positive way. You can be part of a community and feel completely on the outside, of course. Being surrounded by figures doesn't make you feel part of anything. It's how you engage with those people. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping both the participants, the people within and outside of those neighborhoods will feel a sense of connection and interest in becoming further connected beyond this project. I'm hoping that too. I'm also hoping that, I mean, being a part of a community can look like so many different things. It doesn't mean being an extrovert or being there yep. with everyone and, you know, inviting people over for, you know, dinner it's I think no. on one level it's about knowing that you are seen heard yeah even and if that's like even all you know moment that you're noticed somehow yep and there's there's many different ways to connect that don't involve plunging into a crowded room yes. or walking up to a random stranger <laughs> So that's one thing I do love about technology is that it allows for that. Some of my earliest friendships were forged, you know, online because mm -hmm. I just was not comfortable engaging directly. And what's beautiful now is with my artistic practice, I can do both. You know, I am capable now of engaging directly or engaging through um, virtual online uh, methods where I can create a comfort level, not just for me, but for my participants, depending on what's best for them, which yeah. is really, this come down, comes down to that. Um, find how you best connect. Don't worry about what you should do or what other people think you should do, should I say. Um, find what's comfortable for you, because there's always a way of engaging. It might not look like the most typical, common way we imagine, but there's always a way. Yeah. That makes me think as well of um, relationships aren't always with people. That you can have a relationship with 
with animals, with spaces in the community as well. And they can be meaningful yeah. as the one you might have other humans. So again, it looks like it can look like so many different. Yep. I'm so excited to see how people contribute. Yeah. Me too. I'm very eager to hear those audio recordings. So yeah. Keep me posted for sure. Will do. And are we mentioning our next pop up or is that still T B D? No, we can mention it. Um, okay. I think uh, safety is always important. So yep. that's the reason why we're collaborating with different organizations who can help us manage things safely due to the pandemic. Uh, so this Friday morning, that's what, July 7th? Help me out here, folks. July. I wish. August. <laughs> August 7th. I think it's, I think it's August 7th, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., right? That's it. So okay. August, Friday, August the 7th. <laughs> until 1 p.m. We are going to be at the Backdoor Mission in a pop-up in the parking lot and the mission folks will be helping us. As, so folks who are in the community who utilize this amazing service that's there, all these amazing resources that have come together at Mission United uh, will be there and we have your stories. So I think Danny, Danny yes? I, I did not hear you. Were you asking if I would be there? I will absolutely be there, yes. And we will have a computer or a phone or something so that we can record people's stories, but you don't have to do it alone. You can be with one of us when you do it at a distance. Uh, and we'll just have a chance to answer any questions that people in the community have and create together one way. We're going to bring along a big community as well so people can paint and fabulous yeah make a little bit of a mess if they want to as well um, yeah but keep an eye out for those. if you live in an where you would like something similar message us let us know okay yep. yeah danny you're amazing thank you thank you the feeling is mutual <laughs> anything that you share with the community i don't know any shout outs advice Anything? Oh, I, I always freeze at moments like this. So, you know, I can't come up with anything. But I will say um, just in advance that each of you who chooses to participate in this project, you you have my gratitude. And I, I hope that I can visualize your story in a way that makes you feel heard and represented. That That is my hope. So... I just wanted you to know in advance you, you have my gratitude and appreciation for your participation. It's uh, impossible to do work like this without willingness to communicate. So I, I am appreciative of that willingness. Um, that's about it. I'm just excited for Friday at this point. Me too. <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, the, yeah, well, I, if you're interested, Again, just if you uh, are connected to any organization can host us, let them know. And we'll just take this project. Yep. And yeah. please feel free to give us your feedback along the way. Um, you can participate just as much as you can shape this by communicating with us and telling your thoughts and feelings on our process. We're open. We're listening. Stranger listening. <laughs> Danny, it's been a pleasure having you. you too. And thank you. Thank for you so much. A, thank you for being an artist. Thank you for being a part of our community. Uh, you're awesome. You too. We'll talk soon, okay? okay. Bye for now. Bye. Oh, no. I don't want to do that, actually. I'm just going to say bye to Danny. How do I say bye to you? Oh, this is how. See? Technology. <laughs> 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 hey folks welcome back and uh, thank you again to danny crosby for joining us here uh even with the technical difficulties thank you for everyone who just hung in there to watch and listen we want you to be a part of our listening to our neighbors project so if you haven't already checked it out we have a link 
at the top of our Facebook page. You can go to listeningtourneighbors.com to read up about the project, listen to some examples of the survey being done, and learn what neighborhood you're in. If you don't know, if you're not sure what neighborhood you live in, you can find it all out there as well as participate in the audio survey. And, you know, the only, this is a success because of collaboration. So without you being a part of this, the project doesn't really amount to much. But like Danny was saying, your stories matter. Your experiences of your neighborhood matter. And there's there's no wrong answer. There's nothing insignificant. Everything is beautiful and important in its own way. And each one of you is unique and has a unique experience of your community. So that's what we're looking forward to learning about and hearing and weaving into this project. So please participate in the survey if you can. If you know folks who live in one of these neighborhoods who might like to be a part, just reach out, send them a link, invite them to participate. And if you live in a neighborhood and you'd like to come up for us to come there and do a pop-up, drop us a line and we'll arrange something, okay? And in the meantime, thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this conversation, for listening, watching, for supporting the studio project from afar, for supporting artists in your community who are continuing to make and create and connect with one another in very difficult times. It all matters and it all enriches these places that we live. So thank you for being you, for doing whatever it is you're doing out there. And until we can connect and create with one another again in person, <laughs> I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online, on Instagram every Tuesday or on Facebook every Wednesday. Thanks folks. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.